watch the Canelo fight? Did you watch uh, Triple G's watch, fight last night? Anything? I didn't watch the Canelo fight. Um, you didn't miss much. It was kind of boring. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of fights that get me extremely excited. Like, I'll, I'll be excited if Canelo is gonna fight someone like uh, Terence Crawford or or like um, you know something like, Errol like that. Spence Jr. Or something Errol like that, yeah. Spence. Um, even even Sean Porter. Um, yes. You know what I mean? Like, I just, for some reason, I was telling him last night, like, I don't know why I've never been a fan of... Not not like I dislike him. I just never cared for Canelo. People get so crazy about his fights, and I'm like, eh, so, <laughs> I don't know. Something never, nothing excites me about this cat. I don't know what it is. No, I see what but, you mean. He's great, Fury but... Back. Oh, Tyson Fury, like, that's my actual favorite boxer. You know, that's what I'm Legit. saying. Like, him, he's my favorite boxer. Second is probably, like, it's between... Uh, Lomachenko and uh, Terrence Crawford, like for the like the second the person I like the second most, like right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, but I like yeah, both of them I think a lot. Tyson Fury is without a doubt, hundred percent, my number one favorite boxer. Easily, he's been for a few years now. I love Deontay Wilder. I still can't. I can't knock. I love that man. He has pissed me off with those excuses that he threw out of why he lost. It's. I mean, it changed. It changed my perspective of him, but. Um, Lomachenko, you know that's my guy. I literally put on his highlights in the house for people who don't know him. Like, I love that dude. Yeah, he's um, who's the other one? I like Danny Garcia, but he he didn't show up that last fight, man. Danny Garcia? Oh, you mean against yeah. um, Errol Spence? Um, Errol Spence, yeah. I mean, he didn't show up. Now, granted, Errol Spence is an animal. We get it. He's a tactician. The dude is a beast. But it's like Danny Garcia's no slouch, bro. Like. The thing about Danny Garcia is that Danny Garcia is uh like he's he's made his rounds like he's been there for a minute, you know what I'm saying? He's mm. a he's a veteran. He's taken, uh, he's been a, he's been in a lot of like epic epic wars, like in the past. Um, I don't know if um, I don't know how much he's gonna be able to just keep up with the new furious talent. Like he's keeping up with them, but like to to beat them is just gonna get harder and harder. It's not. You know what I'm saying? He's more, I feel like, um, on the downside of his career. Um, and these other guys are just getting better and better. Yeah, well, I mean, I could see why you say that. I don't think he's on the downside. I just don't, after seeing what Errol Spence did to him, especially after what Errol Spence just went through, that just solidifies me that he's a gatekeeper. He's gonna be that like Donald Cerrone kind of guy. He's gonna he's gonna beat top contenders, but he's never gonna be there, you know. Yeah. And I hate it because I mean I feel like he could. That's what I'm wow. saying. He's at that he's at that point where he's kind of like a gatekeeper, kind of like um, kind of like Yoel Romero, like Yoel Romero. I think they got rid of Yoel Romero because, um, he, like the young fighters who fight who fight him, he'll probably destroy them. Like the young, like up and comers, will probably destroy them, but he's not gonna like win the belt. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you got you got those people that you just never see a championship in them, but you know they're gonna beat top level competition left and right, left and right. You know. So. But there was a point where know. Danny Garcia. There was a point, like uh, like ten years ago, where I would have I would have probably given it to him over um, Errol Spence. Like ten years ago, ten Danny Garcia, I think will beat uh, Spence. I don't think so. <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> I don't think so. Bro. So you think it's just Ever a style? Spence is a problem, bro. So you think it's just a style? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think with them, I hundred percent think it's just Evan Spence is just he's like a puzzle, you know. He's like one of those guys that like he doesn't do anything crazy flashy. He just his timing is perfect. Mm. Perfect. It's always perfect. It's beautiful to watch. But the, I, I, when it, with the Canelo fight, I have a feeling that there may be some rigatoni going on there. Yeah, but that's what I don't like about boxing, though. Like, you, you know how... As yeah, much you get as you, this feeling. That, hmm? Go ahead. No, 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 as much as you talk about how, um, you know, the, the, the judging in the UFC could be suspect at times, I think that happens a lot more often in uh, boxing. Well, the boxing is a mafia organization. Yeah. Everybody knows that, you know? So 
And if you if you watch the Canelo fight, like I'm I was specifically focusing on Callan Smith because I wanted to see his movements. And I swear on my life, like after like round three, it started to look like the nigga was holding back his punches. Like he like he looked like he was punching, but then they kind of like when he got there, he's stopping. And I'm just like, am I bugging right now? Should I be recording this? Am I a conspiracy theorist? Because it was this, it's like it, for me when I watch top level boxing, like the guys that sell, boxing ain't gonna let them lose. The organization ain't gonna let them. I think that's where their confidence comes from. Like Canelo, they won't let him lose until he fights somebody who sells more, like Floyd. Floyd's the only other guy, and look what he did nothing. And I'd like to say it was Floyd, but I'm sorry, Canelo should have opened up on that dude. Because Canelo knows he can take a punch. He could take every punch from Floyd. There should be no fear. He should be dogging him. But like you said, say he did nothing. But like you said in the past, you said that um, there's a there's a difference between like um, taking a power punch and taking a punch with precision. Like when I mentioned um, when I mentioned Israel and someone else, I forgot it was. So so one thing that Floyd does have is precision and he has Mm -hmm. he has precision and he has timing. So um, I think uh, what's his name was they might not have been like super power punches, but they were you know, they were hitting it. They were, they were annoying enough, like for him to not want to just try to walk through Floyd's punches. Cause he's Floyd is I, just hitting that sweet spot. I agree with you, but if you, you got to watch, did you watch the fight? Did you like yeah, watch, yeah, I watched watch that fight. fight. I watched that fight. I don't, I feel like Floyd did nothing to Canelo that should have stopped him. Nothing, nothing that Canelo hasn't seen in a sense, as far as damage, you know, obviously Floyd, you, it's going to take energy to hit him no matter what. But you gotta hit him. So and if anyone can hit him, it's fucking Canelo. Canelo's lightning fast. Mm-hmm. Lightning fast. The way he fucking hits that fucking shit is crazy. He should have hit him. He should have pieced him up. Even still, if Floyd could have potentially still won that fight, but he should not have won it that easy. And it's always the same story. Round one, two, and three, the person who is supposed to lose kind of looks good, looks normal. He's throwing, he hit he hit Floyd with a couple. You know, he P's and Q's in the first two. And then, like, just goes flat, which Canelo doesn't do. Right. He doesn't do at all. He's been in every high-level fight in the world. Floyd shouldn't have made a difference, you know? And then something, when you watch it, it just looks sketch. If you watch it and just look at Canelo, look at nothing else, and just watch every punch he throws and every movement he makes, nothing about that says this is Canelo. Nothing. Yeah. Just like when Pacquiao fought him. Pacquiao, first couple rounds, pieced him up, and then goes flat. Now, granted, this this could be a pattern where Floyd maybe does something during those rounds where he stops, you know. But I don't know, bro. I don't know. It's just all too similar for me to sit like and say, "Oh, Floyd is just really good at shutting them down after the third round." I don't know because he doesn't do anything. He doesn't do anything to them, you know. A regular boxer, yeah, but a dude like Canelo. That Mexican fucking spirit inside of him. The speed. I think he can match Floyd for speed easy. That dude is quick, bro. And he got a jaw. A crazy jaw. Never been knocked down. Oh, knocked out. And it's just... And he's got bombs. He should have pieced Floyd up. I mean, um, I feel like this is the perfect segue into, like, Wonder Boy versus uh, Jeff, Jeff Neal. Cause like on one on one hand you 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 got you got kind of a similar example. You got like Wonder Boy, who's a supreme te- uh, tactician. He he hits with precision. He's never dared to be hit. You understand know what I'm saying? So yes, um, if you if you if you look at that fight, um, Jeff Neal, who has a great guard, like in most of his fights who has great forward pressure, who's just great. Super, with, with, super strong. Yeah, super, super strong. strong, great with overall technique. For some reason, he he just couldn't like really get going. He never really got into a rhythm in that fight. I think I, can, I think I can, I think I can close that gap. The, with Wonder Boy, there is the fear of being knocked out. Maybe not with his hands, but his legs. Could his legs. put you to sleep. But there's Wonderboy, no fear of being knocked out by Floyd. <laughs> it's right. Nothing. But I you feel know, like, at least for a man like Canelo, I'm sorry to talk to you, but yeah. I feel like I feel like Wonder Boy basically uh, dictated the fight. I think he dictated the fight mainly uh, with his jab. 
even though he even though he used his his um his legs to like when he got on the outside to like you know like um measure a little bit but um mainly i feel like he was dictating the fight with his jab like and and the the best thing that he was able to do was uh like hit on a hit on an angle most of the time mm. like he he was just um he was always on the go whenever he threw his uh he was always on the go when he threw the, his jab or whatever and then uh he was never there to be hit i agree i mean i mean i think it was his footwork that won in the fight it was just a constant footwork the non-stop i mean he looked like he looked like lomachenko Yo, he gets night. on his he bike looked good man yeah he he looked in i mean like i feel like that's the best wonder boy has looked oh, if man. i'm being honest you honestly and he's, he's looked fantastic in the past but something about that fight and then the fact that he the way his knee that contusion in his knee swelled up and the fact that you he made it obvious and still came out and decided, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna dog this guy and went in there and going at it with Jeff Neal, which you don't want to do, <laughs> you know. And he, yo, yo, I don't know how to put this, but like, I think I think his footwork won him the fight. Obviously, I think just uh, just not being there, like you said, he's never there. He had that Lomachenko feel, like he was never there for Neil to hit. But mm-hmm. I, what I was just referencing was that it's it's easier to shut down against a guy like Wonderboy because there is that fear no matter what that it could like I could go in and he could just throw a question mark kick and bling and I'm gone you know mm-hmm. whereas and when I was speaking for Canelo Floyd Canelo sh- should have had zero fear zero fear you know if anybody Floyd should have been scared and Floyd didn't have an ounce of fear that whole fight and I don't know it's just things like that are sketchy super sketchy but so, forget Floyd. I'm, so, I'm done with Floyd. <laughs> no, nah, I got you. I got you. So um, the two things that were, that stood out the most for me with uh, Wonder Boy, one was the fact that he was he was moving like someone who was like 18 years old. Like 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 um, you had like you had mentioned in the chat, he had like he he was on his bike the whole time. Um, he was he was cutting angles the whole time. Like it's not an easy thing to do to to move backwards, and also like throw different attacks, like yes. for for like for like five rounds. Then the other thing I was I was um, extremely impressed about was um, not even impressed. It was just trippy. It was trippy to see how nice one the boy is. <laughs> you yes, know? like like you, I think you're talking I, about during the fight. Yeah, the during the fight. I think at some I think at some point like he. Uh, he like I think he kicks him in the face or something like that, and then he says, "You good?" I'm like, "Bro." Yeah, because Neil turns around and he goes like this, and he goes, "Hey, you're right." He's yeah, like, I'm, okay, like, cool. I'm like, I'm <laughs> like, yo, he, like, dude, hit him, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yo, honestly, that was that was one of the craziest things ever because um, because because for for one at 37, I felt like like I don't know how he's it's like a it's like a a rebirth of Wonder Boy, you know. But yeah. then but then also it's like um. I didn't even I didn't even understand I didn't even think that MMA fighters could be, you know, this nice. Like he goes beyond. Like he should really yeah. get like the nicest motherfucker belt. <laughs> well, he does. He does already he has it. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Um, man, but I you gotta got think. Home. You gotta think say, about this gonna... too, huh? Well, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go. Ahead. You gotta go ahead, think, think about it too, from like from like um, from our perspective. We're just seeing like Wonder Boy cut angles and he just looks he just looks super fast he just looks super you know sharp like we see what's going on on the, on the outside because we're watching the tv but from jeff neal's perspective it probably looks like like wonder boy is, tele- is teleporting in there yeah so what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah yes you're, you're trying to shoot uh, like it's like playing a video game and they're lagging and you're trying to shoot and it disappearing 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 and you don't know what the hell to do it's it's like it was it was a classic Wonder Boy performance, you know? And it, 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 I ain't gonna lie, it got me excited. I, I counted Wonder Boy out fights ago, but I'm hyped right now. Like, I wanna see who they're gonna give him next. I, 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 he's not getting Jorge. He needs to get that pipe dream out of the way. Jorge has to fight Covington. I don't want him to, but he has to fight Covington. He has wait, to. Wait, 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 you don't want, you don't want Jorge to fight Covington? No. That's a, that's, I think that's, Covington that's, is gonna win. That's. <laughs> I love I just love I just love bad blood fights and I feel like um 
he'll he'll actually he'll actually be um invested enough in that fight. I don't think against against Usman he was really invested in that. But like I think he takes the things like Covington and the Askren um thing personal. Like when he was gonna fight Askren, I was afraid for 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 Masvidal to be honest. But but <laughs> not in the slightest but bit. he but he went in there and shocked and, and I mean come on like you didn't expect him to go in there with a flying knee and just finish him. Like 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 I like can tell you, I can tell you why I wasn't fearful at all because Ben Askren as I, I love the guy, but he's a one trick pony. He's he a wrestler. Under, he was okay, but he was undefeated. He beat people like Douglas he was Lima. undefeated by just wrestle fucking people. And Jorge Masvidal has a fantastic takedown defense. I never feared for him because even if he took Masvidal down, Masvidal was going to work. Masvidal's great on the ground. I never feared for him. Covington, as much as he annoys me, he is good. He is great everywhere i still can't get what he did to robbie lola out my head i was i i was i didn't know how to speak english that not night. even woodley like, <laughs> like woodley i think that was well, woodley impressive. woodley woodley was gone already woodley's mind wasn't there this was like the third woodley fight in a row that he just stood on the cage getting hit doing nothing mm -hmm. so for him to do that to woodley after woodley was already like that didn't really mean much to me but the fact that he decided not even to put one takedown on Robbie Lawler, fought Robbie Lawler where he is the most dangerous right here and broke a record of the most uh, significant strikes, I think, in a fight or something mm -hmm. like that, or the most punches thrown in a fight, period. He pieced Robbie Lawler. Like, Robbie had nothing for him. That's insane. Yeah. No matter how old Robbie is, Robbie, if you just throwing hands, Robbie going to fuck you up. And Covington right. made him look like a fool, made him look like it was his first day in the gym. Yeah. And I, I just like that that like traumatized me because I don't care for Covington's antics. But as a fight fan, I love him. Mm -hmm. And I'm <laughs> torn. I'm torn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just want him. I want if 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 this somehow can get out there, I want Covington to just go on a mic and say, listen, y'all know this is bullshit. Y'all made me do this. I had to become a dick to get your attention. And now I can finally say, I don't care. It is. It was all bullshit. I don't care about Trump. <laughs> Whatever he wants to say, you know? Now that Trump's not president, he don't have to suck his dick. <laughs> and just like, just let it out and be like, now nah, I'm going to be me. And if you don't like it, go fuck yourself. I swear on my life, I'll buy his merchandise if he does that shit. And flex. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Congratulations, Wonder Boy. What did you think? But about I want to get, I want to get, I want to get to some controversy. Just because we we we're gonna talk about all the fights, but I want to get to Chaos and Pajeda because Chaos and Pajeda was the Ferguson Oliveira of this card. You know, it was the people's main event. And as you as you already know, I think Chaos won that fight. I think easily won that fight on points, just on points in general. You know, because. If you saw, if this were a five, uh, if this were a five round fight, Chaos would have definitely lost this fight because you could tell by halfway through the third round he was done. He had nothing left in the tank. Pajeda had many rounds left in it. The way he finished round three was incredible, but it doesn't change the fact that he lost the first two rounds. In my opinion, obviously. I mean, mm -hmm. what do you think about that? What do you think about the first two rounds? Um, you think they were clear for Chaos, or do you agree I, that the decision? Like I feel like uh, Chaos clearly won the second round. I felt like he edged the first round. Because the first round, um, I was kind of shocked to see the the significant strikes strikes that, um, what's his name, uh, Chaos was ahead. Because Chaos I agree. looked like, yeah, because Chaos looked like he wasn't even doing much. Like, he looked mm -hmm. like he was just trying to figure out the timing because, what's his name, Michelle Mejeda is like, um, it's like it's like a hard puzzle to figure out. Like it's you you question yourself whether you want to throw a strike or not because he throws so many feints. He he gives you so many different looks. I mean, so because he's literally dancing while he's fighting you. That's the right. crazy thing. He looks like he's dancing side to side while he's fighting you. Like it's crazy. It's bugged up. But yeah, I agree. Yeah, like Pajeda is just a is just a supreme <laughs> athlete. So so um, when you're standing in front of him, it's just like um, just a hard thing to figure out. But um, I thought I thought it was a clear. I mean, I thought it was a. I thought 
overall chaos edged it, but I didn't think that uh, it was like a robbery, really. I think the first round, I'm agreeing with you 100%. When I first saw the numbers for the significant strikes, I was bugging. <clears throat> I, I thought chaos outpointed him, yeah, but I didn't know it was by that much. But also, when you and factor in the other things like octagon control, we forget that this is a thing that they score on too. And chaos kind of controlled the octagon the whole first round. You know, Pajeda was doing like a Wonder Boy kind of thing where Wonder Boy, if, if there's not activity and it's just them kind of like pit pat and then moving around, Wonder Boy is almost going to lose every time because Wonder Boy has a side to side, back up, side to side. He don't control you. And octagon control is move forward pressure and all these things. This is a way that they factor in their score too. And chaos had octagon control most of that first round. And he had more significant strikes. There was no ground game, so there's nothing to do there. Mm -hmm. There was really no cage control in the first round. So I think it was clear for Chaos the first round. I think Chaos got robbed, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, I'm not going to sit here and say it's the worst call ever, in a sense. But, you know, these are two young cats, and I feel like Chaos deserved that. And I hope Dana sees that, and Dana scored it for Chaos and gives him, like, gives him, like, a this ain't a real L type of deal. <laughs> you know, like... It, but chaos has a lot to work on with his cardio, a lot. Yeah, um, I think he also he probably has to work on um, more feints as well, because yes. um, like he's he's already he's already extremely dangerous because people people don't really want to like go in on him because they know like the power he carries. Because you could see like uh, Pajeda, Pajeda was throwing. Like, like he was using a lot of feints, but he wasn't following up those feints, you know, like you, when mm -hmm. you, when you throw that many feints, you have to like now commit to something, but for some yes. reason with everything, with all the tools that he had, he still was a bit gun shy. And that's why I think he lost the fight. But if he was actually committing and taking more risks, I think he could have actually pretty easily one um, set him up for um, a knockout or something. You're talking about Pajeda or Chaos? Pajeda. I think I think if I think if Pajeda would have actually committed um after some of those feints, like he could have done way more damage than than he did in that fight. Yeah, he could have. But you know what? A lot of the time guys like him do that. They throw all them feints to avoid the punch, to avoid the getting hit. Mm -hmm. They do that purposely. Like they'll faint and you see that like we're saying, like, yo, but capitalize. But he's afraid to capitalize because he's probably afraid to get hit. He's yeah. doing that to, to try to keep him at bay as much as possible so he figures out how the hell can I close this gap without dying. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that's what Pajeda's mindset was and all that dancing. I mean, Pajeda's a fucking animal. And the fact that, you know, that was a chess match. And chess matches normally when they, when you got to think that much, that takes a toll on your cardio and your energy too, your, your physical. So it's like for him to be that energetic into the third round, you know, which is not like uncommon or anything like that. But when you when you got to think about the bigger picture, like when these guys start going to main events and they start doing five round fights, is chaos ready for that? Is chaos ready to do a five round battle? Because I guarantee, I can almost guarantee if there were a fourth round, chaos loses this fight by finish. See, at the same time, at the same time, there's not that many fighters in any division who are like, uh, there are great fighters in every division, but there aren't, there aren't, there's very like a uh, few fighters who are like Wonder Boy or Michelle Pajeda, where it's just like this tricky, like puzzle that you got to figure out besides them being extremely skillful. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a yes. lot, like, like Jeff Neal example is extremely skillful, but Wonder Boy is more of a puzzle. Do you get what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, What's his name? Uh, Michelle Pajeda. He's a puzzle. Um, what's his name is, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy that he fought, uh, Chaos Williams. Chaos Williams is is a savage. You know what I'm he's saying? Not but a he's, puzzle, not, he's not a puzzle. You know, you so know what you're getting with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I feel like Chaos Williams will definitely do damage <laughs> with other fighters that are probably, you know, even above uh, Michelle Pajeda because it's not so much to think about. But what's, what's more impressive with guys like that are puzzles, like you say, is that 
what they do to be that puzzle also takes energy. They're constantly jumping around, bobbing. You ever bobbed and weave a oh, bunch yeah, of times? For sure. It's crazy tiring. These guys yeah. don't stop, which makes it even more impressive that they don't run out of fucking energy. They're like like two year olds that they just don't stop. You know, and th- th- I think a lot of that is energy placement. Also, these guys have figured out how, like, if when I when I throw a power punch, not to overexert, not to do that, just like I throw it and I reset, breathe, this and that, dance around. They they found a way to like when while they're dancing to control their breathing. I think to to do that because like look what happened with Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy at the end of that first round was like throwing bombs at this cat. Like he thought he he everybody thought it was done, and and the whole time. You could ask everyone who was here with me. I was saying, stop, stop. You're not going to finish him. You're going to. And look, when he came out the next round, he was done. Greg Hardy don't have that energy saving mentality. Once he sees, he's a, he's a, he's a hunter. So once he sees you down, everything is, is out the tank. He's going to yeah. throw everything at you. So if you survive that storm, you pretty much won the fight after that. Because now you saw in, in, in between rounds, he was, <laughs> his asthma was kicking in. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know where he was. It, it, I think that energy management is a big freaking deal, especially when you climb into that top of the ladder. You could be, you could be that savage killer finisher, cool, but you ain't going to be able to finish everybody, especially in the top 10. They up there because they can't be finished like that, you know? And Tiberia, I called it from the start. I said, Tiberia's a fucking problem. Marching. That dude is no joke. See, but that's the thing, though. I thought I thought um, the reason why I picked uh, Greg Hardy to win this fight, like, originally, was because I felt like Marching the Tiberia wasn't going to be able to, um, like, do well against, like, an athlete like Tiberia. Like, because he went against Derek Lewis. He dominated Derek Lewis for, like, how, how long, like... Um, for like most of the fight, 90% of the fight. And Derek Lewis just throws a Hail Mary and knocks him out. So I figured, okay, um, what's his name? It's not, uh, Greg Hardy doesn't generally get taken down like early, right? So like like Derek Lewis a lot of times. So I felt like what's his name with his hunting mentality he'd be and, and his power, he'd be able to knock him out in the first round. But I don't know, this guy's chin, you know, held up. OD, OD. His chin held up. And 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 because of that, he was able to, you know, get him down in the second round. I was telling these guys, I was like, man, I'm mad I missed that prediction because I, I picked Tiberia to win. <laughs> I was like, yeah. damn, I wish I would have been. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but Tiberia's yeah. good. I, I I I see Tiberia also as I, I I hate saying it this way, but I don't I don't really see him being champion. I don't I just don't. I don't see him getting past someone like Ngano or Stipe or even John Jones. You know, so it's like, I don't, he's, he's great. Uh, is he going to be like a champion? Uh, no. Doubt it. Doubt it. Uh, Talon is too stacked. That's, that's the heavyweight division, right? Yeah. Yeah. These guys, the Cyril gone and, and, and that's Gano, what I'm saying. Is, is he going to get much? past Ngano? Doubtful. Is he going to get past Dipe? Hell no. You know, Cyril Gagne, or how the hell you say that guy's name? Or or even Cur- <laughs> or even Curtis Blades, like Curtis Blades is a Curtis savage. Curtis Blades, yeah. yeah, these guys. No, but I'm 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 excited about the the top five, the top five in the heavyweight division, though. Like, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a that's a solid top five. After after Tiberia won, I was telling these guys I was saying, depending on how Jones John Jones wants to enter, I think that'll be a nice little tune up heavyweight fight. Tiberia. Yeah. Tibera. I know oh, like, it's a hard sell because of who John Jones is. It's just expected either a number one contender or a title. Like it, mm-hmm. I, I think everybody's expecting Engano or Stipe. There's no other but third person he's gonna fight. In I'd say Curtis. I'd say Curtis Blades would be a great test for him. Oh, I, all of them would be great tests. Yeah, all of them. It's just where is he gonna, you know, what they're gonna do with him? You know how how they want it. I don't know. It varies. That's what, did you a, think? Go. what did you think about um, Aldo and uh, Marlon Vera? Um, I had, you know, I had Cheeto winning the same exact way I had Chaos winning. I had Cheeto winning the first two rounds and Aldo the last. <clears throat> I, I'm fine with the decision on that one. I think that one was closer that it could have gone either way. I just, I don't know. I thought Cheeto did enough. Yeah. But 
Jose looked fantastic also. So it's like, I'm not mad at it. And I love his TJ Dillashaw call out. I am here for all of it. <laughs> I love how TJ tweeted. He was like, you see how everybody's calling me out? Because they know that's my belt. I was like, talk your shit, TJ. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we'll definitely... I, I'm, not, I'm not mad at the decision. I just don't agree with it. I'm mad at the Pajeda decision. I think chaos got robbed, me personally. But I'm not mad at this decision. I'm all right with it. So um, I'm noticing a pattern with Aldo. I noticed that um, like uh, Aldo is only the Aldo, the Aldo of old, like the vintage Aldo for only one round these days. One round, the most, a round and a half. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like if um, and he picks it, he picks yeah. what round that gonna be, <laughs> right? So I feel like uh, I feel like if that if uh, if he didn't get a hold of Cheeto Vera, man, Cheeto Vera would have Cheeto Vera runs like fifteen miles a day, and he would have ran all fifteen miles across his face like in that last round. <laughs> like I'm telling you, like Cheeto Cheeto Vera is a type of dude like he's a dog. He doesn't go away. And he seems to get better as the fight goes on. Like he seems to collect more data. He seems to use more tools and he's low key uh, ferocious. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not mm -hmm. the guy, he, you don't, you don't like, when you're thinking about Cheeto Vera um, before a fight, you're not thinking, oh, this guy is a savage. But when you're watching him fight, you're like, wait a minute, this guy's not going anywhere. And he, he's a, he's a, he's a nightmare type, like, um, He's kind of like a like a like a like a Matt like a Matt Brown, mm. like a Matt Brown. Like he just he's that dude that just doesn't go away and he just gives you hell. Agreed, agreed, absolutely agreed. Cheeto, Cheeto's the type. I, I feel like he's good everywhere. You know, he's not great, but he's good everywhere. But it's that annoying thing about him. Like he's like flypaper. Once he got you, he's not letting you go. It's like he's just always there. He's gonna. I mean, this is not a. This is just like a little blip in this thing. He's going to come right back and beat the shit out of whoever's next. I know it. Yeah. Um, Aldo. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if Aldo can ever like make a run at the title again, because um, I don't know, like these bantamweights, like, I feel like you got to get them out like in the for well, anyone, I mean, these days, like whether he's in the featherweight division or the bantamweight division, when you're at the top, like you have to get them out like um, as early as possible if you don't have that if you don't have that cardio, and you're not yeah. none of these none of these um you know bantamweights are gonna are, are gonna go out easy in the top five. Like if he went against Corey Sanhagen, so Corey Sanhagen would have put a crazy pace on him, and would have would I think Corey Sanhagen would have eventually like smashed him. Um, like he has to get specific matchups for him to look good. Like I feel like he'll look good against someone like Aljamain Sterling, but not against like a not not like uh, Corey Sanhagen. And it, and the thing is, if he doesn't knock out Aljamain Sterling, that's another he'll be another problem for him in the later rounds. You know what I'm saying? So I don't so know. You say you think he'll look, <clears throat> you think he'll look good and beat Aljamain, but you don't think he can beat Corey Sanhagen? No, I don't think he be because I think it's uh I think it's the matchup, and I think um. And the thing is, he 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 beat he beat uh, Marlon Marias, like in my opinion, but I feel like like uh, he barely won that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and then he and then he didn't win. He didn't end up winning that fight. So, and Marlon Marias is another guy who fades um, apparently after the first round. Like um, after the first round, Marlon Marias is not like magic Marlon Marias. You know what I'm saying? Like he's well, he's kind of that's he, as of late. Yeah, as of late, like in the last three fights, you know, well, he didn't go to the second round in his last fight, but like against Aldo, even like when he went against Aldo, like I felt like he wasn't the same guy in the second and the third round. Agreed. But I think also that he's been, and this is not something I like to talk about, but I think he's been exposed. I think his jaw is exposed. I think he can't take a punch anymore, to be honest. After that knockout from uh, Cejudo, Mm -hmm. I think I just think he's he hasn't been the same, and I think he's like kind of like on a Tony tip, where it's like can they still take damage? I don't know. Mm 
Mm-hmm. When Tony can, Tony can take the damage. I think he can. I just don't think he's going to win the fight. Whereas Marlon is just strong. I mean, every time he gets back into the cage, I'm going to be scared, and I mean that wholeheartedly. The way he gets knocked out, and it's just like it's it's to the point where when do we start thinking about him? You know, outside of being a fight fan, when when is his health going to become a priority? Because Jesus, bro, the way he's getting murked left and right is just not okay. It's not. Yeah, and then since and since when does uh, Marlon Marais go for takedowns early in the fight? Mm-hmm. He's usually he's usually so confident in uh, his stand up, and um, he and and the thing is for good reason. Like like back in like back when he had that run where he was just starching everyone. I think he had like four he wins in a row. He looked unstoppable. He looked unstoppable. Yeah. Yeah. That first round. And then if you notice, all of those were in the first round, like against a Sun Sal, against Aljamain Sterling, against, um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, the That other guy, Jimmy Rivera, um, against all these guys, like he was starching them in the first round. And then all, all of those were super impressive. And then it's. I feel like as soon as um, people started like taking him, when Cejudo took him to, to deep waters and like bodied him, then I felt like he. I don't know. I don't. I feel like he wasn't the same since then. Yeah, it it sometimes takes a person like Cejudo to make you realize what I was doing worked to get me here, but the way Cejudo switched, <clears throat> it was crazy. I mean, that that was like the best comeback of the year to me. Like, that was crazy. He got manhandled in that first round and just came back and said, I mean, let me show ya in case y'all forgot who I am. You know, like, I don't know. I I personally think Marlon should hang him up. And I don't say that lightly. I don't like saying things like that, but I don't like, I also don't like seeing people get knocked out like that over and over again, you know? Knockouts are great. We all love knockouts with fight fans, but when he gets to the point like him, I don't know. He just he just seems like he's getting knocked out too easy. And I worry. Yeah. Um, and it sucks because um, what's his name? Rob Font's performance was so good. So I don't want to like, you know, take credit away from like how crispy his hands look. A hundred. hundred percent. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Like he was clean. His his shots were clean, bro. Like he was catching my and that's the other thing too, is that like Marlon doesn't seem like he has great defense if he wants to continue with that chin, that alleged chin, you know, like that's a, like, like just to make a random boxing reference that that's my fear with Anthony Joshua. Like when I see a- Anthony Joshua is incredible. He's a Titan amongst men, but does every now and then he gets hit with these things that makes you think like, Oh my God. Like when they were talks of him and Wilder, I was just like, no, no, <laughs> This is not a, that's just like when Connor was still active and they were, remember I told you, I never want him to fight Khabib for that same reason. Because what Khabib has is the same thing that Wilder had on them. It's just that, that key factor that they can't do shit about. Because Joshua could have looked as amazing as he wanted against Wilder. One, well, I think Wilder one punch put him out. Put him so, out. so are you saying that you, you would not want to see Wilder fight Joshua? Of course I would. Oh, okay. I'm okay, just okay. saying. Yeah, yeah. Like when when they were both the only belt holders at the time, minus um um Fury's what they call it the the legacy title the what they call it I forgot what they call it when you're the when you were the last unified champion there's mm-hmm. a title for that that he's technically still a champion <clears throat> but um when they were when they were just talked I was just like this is just it has to happen I want it to happen but it's just not okay because <laughs> I know <laughs> I've seen Joshua get hit by much less than what Wilder would have thrown at him. And I was just genuinely worried that he might go down the first round. Just bing, done. That was different with Fury, where I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt Fury was going to win that fight. To the point where the guy at the bar, the bouncer at the bar, who's my guy, I don't know if you remember that, the, the tall black dude, he wanted to fight me because he was <laughs> Wilder all day. And I told him, yeah. I'm a Wilder fan. Don't get it twisted. Right, right, I'm right. just telling you, Tyson Fury's gonna win that fight. And even though it was a draw, we all know Tyson Fury won that fight. Let's be real. I will happily rewatch that on camera and score it with all you guys. I'll you mean the first fight scorecards. You mean the, the first, first fight, fight, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, he nah. definitely won the second one. There's no doubt about that. I'm saying the first fight, 
was that bullshit draw. Come on, bro. He won like at least nine of those rounds on points. It don't matter if he got flattened and Jesus Christ woke him up. <laughs> he won most of those rounds, you know? Come on. That was that that was that was the boxing rigatoni at its best right there, bro. That was just a setup. That's what it was for the next fight. And then he went on, I don't know if you know, he's going on social media, he's talking about he's gonna fight Wilder again. That he has a that he made the contract for Wilder and then Joshua after that. And I'm just like, why? Why would you fight Wilder again? You beat him twice. There's nothing else to talk about. Let Wilder fight a top contender and call it a day. Is it scheduled? According to Tyson. But then they kept asking Joshua after he beat um, Pulev, or however you say his name. And they, they were interviewing him, and he would, they kept asking him, like, well, do you want to fight Tyson Fury next? Do you want to unify these belts? And Joshua is not going to give a straight answer. You know, he's always just like, he's like, listen, I'm a boxer. Whatever's next, whatever the next challenge is, that's what it will be for Joshua. And I'm just like, just say it. And then Tyson Fury goes live on his social media. And he's just like, you see, the Dosa can't even say the Gypsy King's name. They're all scared. <laughs> like, you know, it's just, just say it, bro. Get on the mic and say, let's unify these belts. Fury, where you at? He's not going to say that. You know why? Because he knows he can't beat him. Everyone in that division knows they can't beat Fury. Nobody can beat that man. And it's crazy because every time I think he seems like he's done fighting, this he just keeps making new contracts for more fights, and I love it because I don't want Fury to go anywhere. I love that man. I love him. He's like he's he's as good of an entertainer as he is a boxer, and that's rare. You know, I love that's it, very man. rare. I love his his trash talk is some of the best, some of the best Incredible. of all time. Incredible. So, all right. So before before we get out of here, like I want to. Um, ask you something so like who do you think has a better chance of doing well in mma tyson fury or clarissa shields clarissa shields is it because tyson fury yes but that's not the main reason i think tyson fury's i have this thing with like really tall lanky dudes in mma i don't think they'll do well a tyson fury just they he's not you can even tell him by his stance and the way he fights. I don't think he's built for MMA. I don't think he, you know, once you bring that humongous man to the ground, which our heavyweights will do, it's over. He's going to look like, um, who was it, James Tony when he came to fight Randy Couture? Was yeah. it James Tony? Yeah, James Tony. That was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. Shame on the UFC for putting that on. That was embarrassing. Like, like Randy Couture was like, could be half his size and he'll still watch him. I'll put I'll put the welterweight champ against a man like James Tony and watch his shit in MMA. There's no reason. That was an, that was an embarrassment. That should go in the Hall of Shame of the UFC. The Hall of Shame. Ridiculous. But Clarissa Shields is different because the way she moves, her age, and just like you can tell she wants this, you know, like and I and I love it. And you see her the way she's training, and you, you look at Holly Holm as kind of a blueprint. Holly Holm was a multiple time boxing champion came in MMA and won her first fight by head kick. Amazing. <laughs> you know, like, and I think Clarissa Shields can do the same. She's talking about Amanda Nunes. She needs to stop because she's going to get hurt. <laughs> but you know, I liked, I liked the contract she took with PFL. I like it because you know, she still can box. She still can do her thing. They're very flexible with that. She'll get some tune up fights, see how she feels. Cause you talking about Amanda Nunes homegirl. Stop it. Amanda Nunes about to go fuck Jake Paul up right now. She need to stop it. I would love that. Speaking I would of Jake love Paul, Dana White. <laughs> speaking of Jake Paul, like um, Jim Jim was talking about this. Jim was like, he would hate to, and he brought up this was a good point. He said he would hate to see Jake Paul box Dylan Dennis because he believes that that what's his name Jake Paul would actually fuck him up but but I and, 100% and, and, agree. And, and and that would be an embarrassment for MMA as a whole and as an MMA fan we don't want to feel that embarrassment <laughs> because like if 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 MMA falls we fall because like we're because we're, we're we're with like like um we're so invested in MMA we we're so invested in the fact that these are the best fighters in the world and and no one could prove you know to us different but something, but after, but if you see someone like a YouTuber, like Jake Paul, a troll YouTuber, beat Dylan Dennis in a boxing match, then it'll make MMA as a whole kind of look like a joke. You understand what I'm saying? Well, 
I agree, but I also believe in the social media age we live in now. Dylan Dennis is already a joke to MMA. I'll give him his props. He's a jujitsu master. He's great on jujitsu. But MMA and his personality and the way he carries out the shit, he's already a fucking clown. He is the Jake Paul of MMA. Nobody give a fuck about that. No, but the casual- he bounces off the cloud of Connor, you know? But the so casuals if that don't fight would be made. I the agree. Ca- the but casuals don't see if it. If that I would have been made. Mm-hmm. If the fight would have been made, the meme express is going to go crazy and they're going to be like that whole, I want to trade Dylan Dennis for this person. They're going to start going in on that. Nigga. Nobody gives a shit about Dylan Dennis. Who is a fan of Dylan Dennis in MMA? Who? Nobody. It's a combination of The only people of that things. are fans of him are people that don't know shit about MMA. Most but likely. The thing is, it's a combination of things. It's even though Conor McGregor went against arguably the best boxer of all time, um, him losing to, to to Floyd, the casuals still didn't understand that. Oh, this is Conor McGregor going against one of the. They they didn't see it that way. Like they didn't look, like casual fans don't look at things logically. Like they just look okay. at it as as oh MMA fighter got <laughs> embarrassed. Like he had no business getting in there. And Dylan Dennis is associated with McGregor, so it's just like it's just like that's it's almost like the same pattern kind of happening. That's that's what it looks like um, to the casual fans that, um, you know, MMA fighters, MMA fighters can't box or they can or or they'll even go as far as say MMA fighters can't really fight. You know what I'm saying? That's what I feel like the, a lot of casual fans would feel. But I mean, I could be wrong. I agree. I just I think when you're speaking of Connor and Floyd Mayweather specifically, I think Connor <clears throat> won way more boxing fans than anyone thought just because of the work he put in. It was a sketchy stoppage. I don't care what anybody says. Everyone knows it's a sketchy stoppage. He didn't even he didn't even put him down once in a fight. And the ref is stopping it. Sketch. But um, but also the the bigger worry, especially when Connor was fighting with Floyd, if you if you remember, like he was doing a lot of legal shit. He was throwing like hammer fists. He's like he kept rabbit fake, punches. I think he faked the knee at one point, you know, like and like he was doing weird <laughs> shit. Where those, when the casual boxing fans are like, what the fuck is this guy doing? You know, like they're getting mad. Yeah. <laughs> but then <clears throat> you have ESPN, all these places breaking it down to them. All these guys, they watch ESPN and they watch that show and they hear Stephen A. Smith and all these guys talking about it and they start breaking it down and how even though he lost what he did with Floyd and Stephen A. and all of them, the most popular guys gave Connor the utmost respect. Cause they and they understand like if Connor would have went in there and just said let me just box a top guy yeah he probably could have won probably would have won he went in there and fought arguably the greatest boxer of our time and did pretty good you know <clears throat> if it wasn't for that fucking sketchy ref and that sketchy situation from the get I don't know if you remember the way the ref was talking to both of them right from the start when they when they posted them up in the beginning and the way the ref was talking to Connor I gotta I you gotta go back and watch that video and tell me. It is not weird, like how he said he's talking to Connor as if he already knows Connor is gonna start doing stupid shit, like Connor's gonna break the rules or something like that. Like he's assuming, and like you're not there to assume, brother. You're there to keep them safe and enforce the rules. That's all you're right. there for. Exactly. Shut your fucking mouth, bro. The way he was talking to Connor was crazy. And then that stoppage, bro. I don't understand why they didn't talk about that more. When have you ever seen a fight get stopped like that? Yeah, Connor was wobbly, but he's fighting back. And why didn't you just let him get knocked down? Give him a 10 count. I don't understand what happened there. He, the ref just said, fuck that. It's over. I don't care. And nobody was talking about that. Nobody was talking about how weird that stoppage was. I didn't agree with it at all in any facet. We've all seen Conor McGregor in that zombie mode and come back with Nate Diaz. He looked like he was done in the third round and came back and fought strong. You know, like, it's just, it happens. If, if he's going to get laid out, let him get laid out. Yeah. Let him go out on his fucking shield. Yeah. Because I guarantee you, Connor would have made it to the end of that round. And I guarantee you, he would have came out stronger. That ref robbed us of that. That ref is the reason why Connor lost the way he did. Not Connor. Wow, I never talked I think, about this. I was pretty emotional about that. <laughs> no, no, no. I, th- I think, I think, I think um, boxing, like the boxing world, um, like, ex- like they, they they held their breath, you know, like when that fight was going on, and then when 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 finally that thing got stopped, like everyone like exhaled, and including the ref. Nah. 
So it was the mafia. When they saw that kind of, they were like, the mafia was like, end it now, end it now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The ref was like, like, first copy opportunity. That. Done, done. He's wobbly. By the way, yeah. do you know like the, the UFC has a pretty major lawsuit on their hands right now? Did you know that? Nah. There's some serious shit going on in the courts right now about the UFC monopolizing the industry. And this has been a thing for a while. They've been battling this in court for a while, but now apparently it's getting pretty freaking serious. It's pretty interesting. Because they, they want, basically, they want, on the fighter side and the people who want a union for the fighters and all that stuff, and I get all that, they, it seems like they want for, bo- for a fight, what MMA people, what boxers get. You know, They want the maximum pay. They want all that stuff. They want them to have options, and I get that. But they, it seems like they want like any promoter. They're like, oh, if, if UFC is not going to give them that, then cool. Then Mark Cuban could come in and you know say, hey, this much fight, this much you, this and that we fight here, and then all of a sudden the cross promotion. Because the, the whole thing is they want cross promotion to be guaranteed, not something that only one entity is controlling. Because Bellator has already done it. Everybody does it except UFC. UFC is like Apple. You ain't getting in here. This is us. That's it. You know. And the fact that they bought out besides Bellator every other competition they've had they bought them so it's like you know strike force was the biggest one strike force was on the come up they bought them they bought wec you know they bought invicta the female one they buy everybody bro that's a competition wow. except Bellator. so they're like um what's his name like mark zuckerberg yeah and jeff bezos and all that they they yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so dana doesn't seem to like he cares when they bring it up and he's just like, he's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. That's how much I care about it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's his answer for it. Oh, man. So, but it's going to be, there's going to be an interesting couple of months coming up with that lawsuit. Keep an eye on that. It's definitely going to be a conversation piece for later. Definitely. Definitely going to keep an eye on that. Um, and it would that's be true. cool to see uh, more like cross promotional stuff in the future. A hundred percent agree. A hundred percent. Especially oh, for champions, you know, like we, we, uh, we, yes, there's some divisions that have just insane top contenders that we have, but <clears throat> we need to see like champions go against cha- like, like Bellator has niggas that are undefeated on their roster animals that I would love to see them fight our champions, you know, like yeah, why like, not? Like, I would love to see Musashi versus Izzy. That's one I, of the fights. I mean, I mean, Musashi would be like the that would that would be literally the one guy in the middleweight division who was like part of like the three headed monsters that um, I feel like it, it would be worth Izzy testing himself against. Like, like, like I don't feel Izzy, like Izzy. Huh? Izzy bodies him. I'm telling you right now, Izzy will body Gegard Musashi, and I, I like Gegard Musashi. I like him. Izzy will body him. I I I bet you money. No, no, I, I, bet I, I just flat out cash. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I would just like to see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with them 100 percent with the cross promotion. That, that whole shit. That no matter what, we won't have that. That needs to stop. You know, there needs to be some sort of like, you know. And then this whole like having one deal for sponsorship needs to go. That like, like the the guy I always forget his last last name. His name was Nate. Nate the Great, whatever it is. I forgot his last name, but Nate he was doing a podcast. I, I don't know if it was Mark. No, it wasn't Mark White. It was somebody else. A, um, Irish guy. I think. But he did, a, he did a podcast with Josh Thompson and um, Big John McCarthy. And they were talking about it. And um, he mentioned, he made good points where he was like, when he fought last, which was a while ago, he said he made $45,000 in sponsorships. <clears throat> he said, if he went to the UFC today, with all his experience and everything, he gets only five thousand dollars from Reebok. That's crazy, and that's all he's allowed to get. You know, and it's just it's crazy. Like, like Brendan Schaub brought a good point where his last fight or one of his last fights, I forgot which one, he made more than the entire roster made just from his sponsors. That's crazy. That's their that's purse. Right. The entire, there was a fight night, so nobody was getting paid millions of dollars. But the entire fight main card, just on sponsors, he made more than all of them together. But if he were to go back, he would, he, Brendan Shaw would probably get like ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. That's crazy. Dang. You're basically stealing money for these cats. And I get the whole thing where Dana was like, I don't want the messy look and a condom depot on their ass and all this shit. I get that. But why should that be your call? 
These are right, independent right. contractors, you know? If you want Reebok to have a uniform, make it so that Reebok is your, or Venom, whoever's going to be, is going to be your sole provider, but let them put their sponsors on it. Why not? You know? Uh, I don't like it. I don't like the Reebok shit. I mean, Venom makes awesome gear. I just don't like fighters being stuck to that. I think if you add, if you let the cro- make cross promotion mandatory, you know, give um, take that stupid one sponsor off. Let these let these guys make their damn money, you know, and let them have a union member there for when they do contract. Every time you make a contract with them, let them have a union rep that is savvy in the MMA industry so that they don't get duped. A lot of these guys, you know, like I think of a person like Scottie Pippen in the NBA, the way he made that like nine year contract because he just knew he needed money. He wanted to make sure he had a sell thing. And he was the most underpaid superstar in history by miles for so long, you know, and like we want to, we don't want that, you know? Right. These guys need backup, even if it's their first time in that office. If you are a professional MMA fighter, it should, you should have a federal mandatory union rep there that understands the game there for you to protect you, no matter what. There you have it. Uh, we do it all. Solutions, breakdowns, <laughs> <laughs> predictions. So I like this little head-to-head, Rosie. <laughs> I like this. Oh, look yeah. at that. Look how much I like it. I dropped my <laughs> Nah, this was definitely fun. Tune in, guys, next week for our, well, not next week. I don't even no. know. Yeah. The next the next fight is probably like two weeks from now, right? Two or three weeks from now. Like I think it's like three weeks. Yeah. Like three weeks from now. So this is gonna be it's gonna be a and tough three weeks. We got Connor coming up, boy. Yeah, we'll probably we'll, that fight. we'll probably still be here next week talking about something, some new fight that's that's coming oh, up yeah, or, we'll or, or whatever. You know, there, yeah, there we'll have something, be, we'll have something for you guys, definitely. For sure. Definitely. But yeah, tune in and peace out. Happy New Year. Yes, sir. We won't see you.